Sped up eight times, this is flying past the wall fire damage, the 6,000 acre fire that destroyed 41 homes in Butte County, just south of Orville. I'll do a more detailed update on this later. Approaching the lake from the south with a lake level about 784 feet, they continue to lower the lake down to 700 feet with uh, 10,000 CFS out and about 3,000 CFS in. As the lake gets down nice and low, right here is the temperature controlling inlet structure for the Hyatt powerhouse. One of the uninformed comments I got on the last update about rice farming was about the release of warm water from the Thermalito After Bay back into the Feather River, upsetting the ecology for the salmon. Remember, every dam in California is required to control its temperature for the fish downstream, and that's how they do it here at Oroville, through the curtains in this inlet structure, which draws water at various depths to provide the right temperature for the fish downstream including the water from the after bays. As we approach the inlet structure to the main spillway, it looks like they've uh, added a new access road to get up there and inspect and repair the gates as necessary and inspect the inlet for excessive scouring. They're not going to do a lot of work on this inlet structure and they really don't need to as long as the spillway is operating, functioning normally, at least for this season. The red that you're seeing on the shoreline there is um, floaty barriers for all the logs from earlier in the year ca to capture all the debris that came down from the rainstorms. They got that all hauled off and moved off and get it chipped and burned. Up over the PCC or structural concrete plant, begin, we begin to get a closer look at the secant cutoff wall where they're beginning to drill. From DWR, footage posted on 1 August, you can see the giant drills drilling the first of the pilings for the secant wall all the way down to bedrock. Remember the whole idea of the secant cutoff wall is to prevent head cutting erosion at the emergency spillway like that which caused the evacuation of 188,000 people if they ever have to use the emergency spillway in the future. First, they're going to drill for the unreinforced, quote, soft pilings about every fourth hole in the form block here, followed by every other hole, all the way down to bedrock, 50 to 75 feet deep. Then they'll drill secant into these soft pilings and pour a reinforced structural concrete piling in between them, creating a very strong structure. Secant cut into each other as opposed to tangent, just right alongside each other, thus the name secant cutoff wall. My only question is when are they going to extend the secant wall into the eroded portion of the emergency spillway? Is it the power lines on the temporary shoe fly connection that are in the way of the drill rigs or do they want to build up the RCC on the emergency spillway in order to get the equipment on top of that to continue the secant cutoff wall? At any rate, they've given themselves uh, two seasons, this season and next season, to get the work completed on the emergency spillway so that the emergency spillway can eventually handle a flow of 30,000 CFS over the top of the OG Weir. On the upper portion of the spillway, taking a closer look, it, it looks like they're just tidying up the demolition left over from the unauthorized blasting that must have thrown the schedule off.